Hi everyone. Now, nothing quite prepared me for what happened when I posted up the video of this. It is the raindrop technique, which I decided to do bigger raindrops and put fish in. And everybody just went crazy for it. <laughs> Thank you ever so much, everyone, for, for your responses to, to seeing this video. Um, I still don't know whether I, I have come up with an, a brand new idea or whether this had been done before. Um, I may have. I don't know. <laughs> But I know the raindrop technique itself has been going viral for a while. Um, it was T and Art that brought the technique to my attention and I wanted to try a couple more things. Now, uh, another crafter from Loose Screws Crafts. Loose Screws, please could you tell me what your name is so I can I can refer to you properly rather than just by the business name. But Loose Screws Crafts came up with the idea of maybe footprints and they said, yeah, you know, go ahead and, and use that idea if you want. So I'm going to have a go, but I'm really hoping that Loose Screws will do a video soon as it was it was their idea as well. So I can take no credit whatsoever for this idea, but footprints using the raindrop technique. So that's one I'm going to try and I shall be doing it in these, in these coaster moulds. I'll probably do two so we've got a matching pair. The other thing I wanted to try was taking the raindrop technique to the extreme so as you can see how I've done these bubbles here they're bigger they're deeper yeah that that was a kind of newish idea I think in itself I wanted to see how far we could push that and uh, yeah so I'm going to layer it and that's why I've got a deeper mold here so if I can just introduce you to the things that I've got to hand to do today's little projects First of all, I have obviously got the moulds which you have seen. I have got a high viscosity resin. This dome's deeper because it is higher viscosity. So I've got that one from J Diction. And I've also got, just because I found it sticks to the moulds uh, and stays in place better when you're doing bigger pieces, some soft resin. This dries bendy so it doesn't lift away from the mould. You'll see a video, I'm putting a video up on that as well. So you'll see where I've been doing some experimenting and have established how that works. The other things I've got to hand, of course, are a big phone charger. This is my big fancy one and my ultraviolet lamp. Now, I'm not going to be using my little one that I normally clip on the side of the desk and point at these quite so much today because I'm going to end up with some quite big areas to do. So I shall be using this lamp, which I've only recently got from Let's Resin. I've had it long enough to get it mucky. I need to have a clean. Um, this is a beauty and it was cheap. Uh, I forget exactly how much it was. Less than £20 though. Um, so I shall be using that for curing them so I can do them all at once. I have got my little clip on lamp. This little guy handy just in case I do need to do any sort of small focused areas. But I don't think I'm going to need to. Anyway, so that's all the kit I've got to hand. I will stop waffling and we will make a start. Right, let's get the footprints underway first. I'm going to use this high viscosity and soft resin. This is the one that I said I found sticks better. Now, the only drawback with it is it's really hard to get out of the bottle. So I'm going to end up really having to get both my hands in and squeeze it. So I'm sorry if I if I do lose you from view some at some point. Um, you know, if I if I block the camera, I will try try not to. What I'm resisting the urge to do is is make this nozzle bigger, you know, poke something down it because it's very useful to have a fine nozzle sometimes. So let's have a go. Now I'll tell you now what I'm going to do is footprints in sand. I thought that would be quite a cute idea and I think the footprints are going to be quite small. About this sort of size there's a heel I'm just drawing it on. The other thing I'm not going to worry about too much is whether I get bubbles in it. Okay, I don't like the shape of that. Now, this is a nice thing about doing this, is I can take it off. I've not done a footprint before, so I'm just experimenting. Have I got black on my hands? Where's that come from? <laughs> I'm just experimenting with getting the shape of my footprint right first. Try again. So initially, I want quite a big blob. That's the heel. This is the front of the foot. So dot and a 
dots by the side of it. Is this going to start to look like a footprint at some point? I'm letting it settle so I can see what shape it goes. Been on holiday recently, I really should have paid more attention to the shape of my footprints. Right, big toe, smaller toe, smaller toe. The toes are difficult on this scale. I think that's the first thing to report. Okay, that sort of worked. I think I'm going to let the toes blur into each other. The other coaster, I think I might do a one big footprint. Should we try that? Something to say about using fingers and toes in art. If you watch a cartoon, you know, whether it's The Simpsons or a Disney or whatever, you'll find that very often cartoon creatures and people don't have enough toes and fingers if you look closely there's a reason for that there's something funny about hands and feet that they just don't look right if you put the correct amount of fingers and toes so very often cartoon characters will be one finger short <laughs> there you go you're going to be next time you're watching a disney or something you're going to be looking out for that aren't you <laughs> So yes, with this one, I'm going to start, this is another experiment actually, in a way, um, not just because of the, the actual technique of layering this. Um, I'm actually going to also see what happens if I put the first layer with the soft UV resin and then do the rest with the high viscosity. Because as you can see, I've only got a little bottle of this. I haven't yet found it in big bottles. So I don't want to use too much. But if I'm going to do a big pond area in this, then um, I'm going to switch over to that one after I've done the first layer with this one. Because, like I said earlier, big areas do tend to lift rather badly. And, yeah, I'll be putting some fish in it. Um, yeah, why not? Everybody likes my fish. <laughs> Let's do some fish. Right, as soon as that's finished doing its thing, I'll put that out of the way. Just giving that the there we go that's it's got two timers on it 60 seconds and 120 which is quite handy all right i'm going to push those to one side for a minute and um because i'm going to do all the resin and the epoxy resin part all at once now yes this is the idea with this one now remember what you put in first will be let's pop those over there what you put in first will be the layer that people see so we're working upside down as usual um I know we don't with everything, but this is most definitely going to be upside down. And what I'm going to try and do, and this is going to take two hands to squeeze out enough. Oh, blimey, this is hard to squeeze out. What I'm going to do is a big area. This is my first layer. Just trying to create a... I'm trying to create what will be effectively a good seal for the rest of the, the resin down onto the silicon of the mould. So I am needing quite a lot here. Although I don't particularly need it to be thick. Deep, thick, whatever the word would be for this. So as you can see there, I've got quite a, a good sized patch. And I'm going to spread that around with my silicon brush. And I want to make it into kind of a bit of a weird pondy sort of shape. Pondy? Is that a word? It is now. I like inventing words. Right, here we are. Just messing about with it a bit to make like a wibbly wobbly pond shape. 
Now this is being the first layer is going to be the biggest surface area layer as well. And I've got to decide what I'm going to put in terms of the colours in this too. See, I don't suppose it needs to be a, a pond. It doesn't need to have fish in it. Um, but, you, you know, use your imagination. I'm sure there's a, a load of things. Maybe I'm thinking maybe... Uh, it could look like the inside of an egg. You could put a baby bird in it, a baby dragon in it. You know, anything that you might find in an egg. Or go back to the inside of some bits of human anatomy. Ooh, there's an idea. Why not make it look like the inside of lungs or something? Brain. You could do a brain. You could do lava. You could do an alien landscape. Oh yeah, an alien egg. We could do an alien egg. I'm just trying to get enough in here to, to create a complete layer. It's pulling away from the resin in places because it's just not thick enough. I don't particularly want it thick, but uh, it's going to need a bit of a thickness to it. To make the seal that I want. This is effectively, that's what this is. It's a layer to create a seal. So I'm just trying to make sure it's there's, there's no bubbles because this, of course, is also not only going to be the seal, but it's going to be the surface area. The resin I'm going to be using, this is probably going to sound a bit weird, but it's a deep pour one. Now, I know these are shallow pours and that's a bit deepish, but the reason I'm using it is because it will degas quickly and I'm finding actually it cures reasonably quickly. Some deep pour ones, this bottle's got a bit wrecked but look it's the one by Arc. I'll put you the link in. Some of the deep cure, deep pour ones because they're deep pour, because they're more runny they do take like you know two or three days to cure rather than your normal 24 hours but what I'm finding with this one is it seems to cure quite quickly anyway. And if I want something that's going to get really into nooks and crannies and um, mix in well with things like sand, which is going to be hard to mix in anyway, makes it thicker anyway, then I'm better off starting with a thinner resin. So I'm going to keep stirring that. That looks like it's done what I wanted it to do. That's good. See, it's gone reasonably flat. As you can see, because it's runnier, even if I stir it quite quickly, I'm not really getting a bubble thing going on. So I'm quite liking using the um, deep pour resins at the moment. Hmm. I'm still experimenting with different brands of resins, <laughs> working my way through them. Right now I'm favouring Arc for the deep pour and Vista for normal stuff because I'm not getting any, any allergy reactions to them and I'm finding they work really, really well. I haven't tried the Vista Deeper Pore ones yet. That's the next thing on my list to try. And for the ultraviolet curing resin, I'm finding the J Diction high viscosity one is particularly good when you want to dome things deeply. And well, they do a whole range of them, all the different viscosities. So that's really handy. Um, but I am also using the Vista UV resin as well, which I'm finding really good. I'm still finding that sometimes they end up sticky. It seems to be on deeper pores that I'm ending up with a sticky effect. There's only so far you can go with UV resin. Uh, and if I do something a bit too big with it, um, well, it can boil in flash cure as well. Uh, but if I do anything a bit too big, I, that's when I seem to be getting a sticky problem more. But it wipes off, to be honest, with an alcohol wipe anyway. Or you just leave it in the sun for a day and it sorts itself out. But occasionally I'm managing to do it without getting it sticky. <laughs> there we go. I'm now going to cure this. Um, and what I'm going to do is put these all under my 
I'm going to put this under my big lamp so it can do it all in one go. And I will keep putting in more layers. Now each layer will be slightly smaller. So this is this is the high viscosity one that I said I would use. It's, it is really, really nice to use. You can see because it's more viscous, it has a nice lot of surface tension and therefore it domes up. So you can get much deeper domes with it. I've done around the edge. I'm just going to fill in now and let it settle. What I don't want to happen is for it to spread over the sides of the soft resin that I put in first because that'll it'll defeat the whole object of me doing this um, that layer to seal it first. So before it goes spreading, let's get in with the lamp again. So I'm powering the lamp off my little mobile phone charger because this lamp, like many UV lamps, just plugs straight into a USB of some sort. And all my USB ports that I've got all over the place in the room on proper plugs, I've got other stuff plugged into them. <laughs> so I thought I'd bring my little uh, my battery pack up. OK, that's probably enough. Like I said it doesn't need to have cured completely. But what you see, can you, can you see there that you've got like layers building up. Actually, let me zoom you in some. That might be a good thing, mightn't it? I'll move it more into shot as well. I didn't, sorry, I didn't realise it had gone out of shot a bit there. There. So can you see we're getting layers? Um, now, if you've looked at preformed plastic garden ponds, you'll see that they, they're shaped. Some of them you can get like complete square, complete round, whatever. But a lot of the ones that make an attempt at looking more natural, they have like a, a shaped effect to them. Um, but you might get areas where there's it's quite shallow and that's because they, it's like a shelf to put your marginal plants on. So this is the sort of effect I'm going for here. So each layer is going to be a bit smaller than the previous one. <laughs> Okay, couldn't find my arandas, which is worrying because I've got an order for some. <clears throat> anyway, we're going to go in with some koi again. So I'm just going to raid my box of little fishes. I'm now wishing actually I'd put a couple in on a lower layer or higher layer, depending which way around you're looking at it, I suppose. So here's the little fishes. And let's have, I, I always end up putting the shower ones in. That's a, that's a shower. Those who don't know, that's a you know a pattern of fish. That's a you know a proper a proper breed. So I'm going to extend that end down a little bit. Oops, and pop little fishy in there. Give that a quick blast with the lamp to fix him in place. is where this little lamp comes in handy when you just want to do little quick flash cures of small spots um and which other shall i have let's have a little gold gold one. Oh no let's have a tan show i love tan shows one day i hope to have a real tan show they're the ones that look like they've got a japanese flag on their heads see the little the little red dot. Let's just leave it at the two because I don't want to overcrowd this. So this is coral sand. As you can see it's a nice light golden sand. Don't know if the camera is really doing it justice, but it does look 
it's fine pours easily mixes in with your resin well um, and it is real coral sand so yes it's lovely stuff to work with so we'll have that at the ready <laughs> yeah that's kind of spoilt the regular effect i was trying to get but it might create a new effect all of its own so last layer of resin going in here now and this is now deciding it's going to spread all over the place so i'm going to get in there quick with the lamp still thinking on what to put around this maybe just gravel gravel that's a thought isn't it yeah i'm not getting the regular bottom to it that i really wanted but never mind i think this could be because it's getting quite hot now it's generating a lot of heat which with any resin, it's going to make it go runny, isn't it? So let's call that the bottom. That's it. We've done our pond. So I'm going to give that a proper cure time of just a minute. That'll do. And let's put this little lamp away. Now, the sand. Um, let's give that just a little bit longer. Let the sand itself. I've got um, my resin all nicely mixed up here. That should be fine now. Okay, let's put that away now. So we've got our resin here mixed up to go into, into these. And uh, let's see how we get on. So as you can see, it's there's nothing much in the way of bubbles in there. Maybe just a couple, but not a lot. But it's very runny. Let's have a closer look at our footprint. I think that one's actually quite footprinty. You're all counting toes now, aren't you? I've made, made you think. <laughs> Not sure whether these look very footprinty or not, but we'll see. Now the pond, if I and I know because I've tried it, if I'd done this with the bottom layer, oh god, that's got some heat in it. But if I'd done this with the bottom layer, which will be the top, in normal UV resin, that would now be lifting away from the mould. Just wondering where to put one more layer actually. Yeah, because it it's um It, it just doesn't, it, it, although it sticks, it doesn't stick. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't, Tracy. It lifts, trust me, because it, it bends as it gets hot. Um, you do get, yeah, it comes away from the silicon. I don't know what more to say, really. So using a layer of the soft silicon, so, sorry, soft UV resin first seems to be the way to go. Just cure that off. Just wanted to get them up off the bottom, really. You can go as deep as you like with this, really. If you're doing it in lots of little layers, just bear in mind that each layer it is the reason it's getting runnier is because there's a huge amount of heat building up in there. Probably, if I wasn't videoing this, I would let it cool down for ten minutes or so between each each layer. I'll probably cure it for longer as well. Anyway, there we go. There's a bit more depth now. Yes, sand. Where was I? We're back to the sand issue. First of all, I want to pour something into this one. I'll do the sand last because then I'll I'll see what resin I've got left because I'm going to mix sand in with it. I don't want to do that with all of it. Or do I? There's a thought. All right, let's. Sorry, I'm talking to myself again. Let's get some colour in here first. Now I want to give a little bit of depth to this by adding black in the bottom. So I've got, got myself a little makeup brush and we're going to go over with just a little bit of black in the darker areas. And that is, that is just to give it a bit more depth. The black I'm using is actually, it's a nail art powder, so it gets quite a shiny mirror effect to it. Okay, and I'm just blending that out a bit at the edges. Uh, 
And then let's try, let's stick with the nail art stuff actually, shall we? Oh, that's a bit too purple. So maybe we won't, maybe we won't. We'll, we'll get, mm -mm. Yeah, let's go straight in with the Let's Resin one. This is a um, mica flake, sorry, mica powder. It's iridescent. It colour flips a bit, a lot actually, depending on what you use it for. So I'm hoping this will create like a, a colour flippy effect. It's going to be too blue for a real pond, of course. And what you could do is put plants in. You could put your fish in further down. You could put all sorts in it. If you take your time more when you're building up these layers. Interestingly, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm finding the soft cured UV resin in that first layer is stickier in terms of the powders holding on it. Interesting point. Well, I think it is. It doesn't take a lot to impress me. <laughs> really. Now, I've got the powder where I didn't want it, so I'm just going to cut, going to go around with a micro brush, which I might get some alcohol. No, actually, it's big enough to get a wipe in there, isn't it? So let's go around with a wipe. Okay, anyway, stop waffling. I'm going to fill this up with gravel. I'm going gravel, I think. Uh, I've got this weird mix that looks like, um, I think they call it rough terrain or something. I'm going to just pour a load of that in. We'll see if this resin goes, gosh, that's causing a lot of dust. I'm going to see if this steep pour resin will go all the way through that thickness. Because obviously I need to cover the pond. still sticking up so will the resin absorb through that thickness should do it in layers really shouldn't I hmm yeah this is from one of those firms that does all the stuff for wargaming and uh, rather than just model railway but I find it rather uh, that useful actually And let's pour the resin in. I should probably end up backing it with black or something anyway, but I don't know. Will I need to? I'm just intrigued to see how much this, let's make this bit sink, how much that's going to sink down through. Oh, bubbles. Look at the bubbles coming out. That's fun. Can you see the bubbles? <laughs> bubbles. I'm going to make this right up to the top, I think, because it, as it sinks down through, I just hope it goes all the way through and absorbs properly. We'll see. Anyway, over to these little guys. We'll leave that popping and bubbling over there. I'll leave it slightly in shot so you can watch if you want. Now, let's have these two. Let's zoom back out a bit. There we are. Now, clearly, I haven't got enough resin mixed up to do both of these, but I can mix some more. Now, this one, I am going to mix the sand in. So I'm just mixing it straight into my pot. Quite a lot of it. Now, because, as I said, this resin is really runny, whilst that's going to make it thick and gloopy, it's nowhere near as thick and gloopy as it would have been if it was a thicker resin to start with. So can you see the method in my madness. Now what I'm going to do is mix up some more in another pot. This pot is clean, it doesn't look it, I know, it's just stained. But I'm going to mix up a bit more um, so that I can get enough to do both these coasters. I'm loving watching the bubbles pop in that one. It's kind of distracting. <laughs> I'm just wondering whether to put a tiny little spot of sparkle in this too. Mm. 
There we are. Right, let's get that stirred up. I think I will. I think I will. I've got this ultra fine white sparkle dust. I thought it was a mica powder that you could brush on when I bought it. Um, and it's you sort of can, but uh, it is actually it adds it makes more like a glitter, a very floaty, very fine glitter, um, rather than making it opaque. <laughs> I don't know whether that's going to be enough to have any sort of an effect, but we'll see. Right, let's get another stirrer and get this one stirred up first. You see what I mean? I'm stirring it. This isn't sped up. This is me stirring really fast. We do tend to uh, stir too fast anyway. But what you'll see is because it's... I'm not recommending you do this, by the way. You should stir slowly. But because it's so runny... The bubbles start coming out really quickly. Can you see that? So I just wanted to shoot, do that to show you how quickly it degasses. And anyway, I'm going to chuck it straight in with the sand, so it doesn't matter. You should stir it slowly. You should stir it probably three or four minutes, something like that. The sort of thing you can do while you're having your cup of tea. But... Just for demonstration purposes. <laughs> Is that enough sand in there? Don't know if you can see the sparkle actually. Might not put enough to make any sort of an effect. Let's add a bit more. Okay, let's add quite a bit more. Oh, sparkle going everywhere. Still don't know whether I've got enough mixed up here really. Tip that last bit in. You can see it all moving in there. I don't think you can see that. <laughs> this is still bubbling away over here. I might get some heat under this in a minute. That'll encourage those bubbles out. Oop! <laughs> this is this is erupting as well. <laughs> little volcano eruption going on and I'm just going to pour this straight in there should be more than enough in this pot now in fact I've probably got a bit too much but the um yeah you can see, can you see the sparkle I don't know if you can see the sparkle on the camera oh, well, I haven't mixed up too much in fact I think that's going to be about right that was a good guess wasn't it Now, obviously, I'm going to need to leave these 24 hours. As it is the um, deep pour resin, it might take longer to cure. But I'm going to get a bit of heat under it. This, there's a heat mat underneath here. So um, I probably will do that. You do have to be a bit careful with heating your resin up. It can make all sorts of strange flash cures. Of course, resin is also flammable. So be careful what you do with it. I have got a proper resin drying machine it's a let's resin one i don't know if it's their own brand but it's certainly one i got from let's resin that's really good as well for shallow stuff that will fit on the little trays well that's interesting the glitter's sorting itself out around the edges look <laughs> Yeah, I probably could have got away with a bit more in here, but in terms of the resin. But I can always put like a clear back or something on it. Another, you know, I can put another layer in afterwards if I want. And there was me thinking I'd mixed up too much. <laughs> Not really. Um, something to be aware of when you use sand or gravel or anything like that in resin. When you come to, uh, let's use a bit of this up. When you come to sand any sharp bits off that you've ended up with like around the edges, even if it's really fine sand, it sets really, really hard. You're going to struggle to sand it by hand. Now gravel, obviously, it goes without saying you're going to struggle. You're not going to be able to sand that. 
but I was surprised when I found just how hard sand made resin set because I have used sand in things before. There we go, we're not going to get much more out of there, am I? That's the last strips. Right, I'm going to clear off and let this let this all cure up. Like I said, I will get the heat going underneath it because that'll help. And we will be back for the demold. Um, th things to notice though, I'm going to spray the surface with alcohol. This is just isopropyl alcohol. I'll put you the link for... I use a lot of this, so I put it into this spray bottle, but I buy big bottles of it. I'll put you the link for it below in the description. But it just helps to dissipate bubbles off the surface. You can use a, a heat gun and a torch, that sort of thing. But I do find that there's a danger with that in that it's uh, you, one, you can damage your mould and two, you can set fire to things. <laughs> I'm just going around the edges of this because I didn't want I want to make sure that I haven't got any bubbles. Wherever you get right angled corners and things, you seem to get bubbles sit. But I'm noticing that there's not as many bubbles coming up in it now. Obviously, what I don't want to do is disturb the pond in the middle either. This is this pointy thing I'm using, by the way. Oh, here we go. The pointy thing I'm using, I've just pulled the end off, the fluffy, fluffy end off one of my micro brushes. What you want to do whenever you're poking around in a mould, though. Oh, there's one. <laughs> When you're poking around in a mould, just be very careful not to scratch the mould. I really don't care too much about these particular moulds because they're, they're old and they're really cheap ones anyway. But yeah, you can scratch your mould with them. So, last little spray with the alcohol. I'm going to lift this out. There's a chunk. Oops, just going to carefully lift that out. Come here, you little perisher. There you are. There we go. One last little spray and then um, I'm going to let it sit for half an hour or so to let any more bubbles come up out of this one. And then I'll put the heat under it. See you for the demold. Right then, these have cured. So as these were the ones that one of my subscribers, it was uh, Loose Screws. Um, it's challenged me to let's demold these first. Actually, I'll tell you a secret. I've already demolded the other thing. It's ready to show you. I just hope this has worked. Oh look! Oh, yeah. There's a little footprint. It's it's so subtle. Because the sand's so light and because of the glitter in it. I mean, I suppose I could have tinted the back of it with a bit of, uh, you know, black mica or something. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's rather adorable. Here we go. These are quite thin. I probably, if I'm going to use them as coasters, I will put the flood layer on the back as well and again oh look they sort of look like footprints it's as good as I'm gonna manage for a first attempt aren't they cute oh I'm pleased with those <laughs> right now if you remember part of this challenge was also to see how far we could push doing a raindrop effect so let's see what I did. Right, I'm going to tease you by showing you the back first. Ready, steady. Ta da! Now I could have put the fish higher up. Yes, I could have put them higher in the water. I did forget till it was quite late on, but I'm quite pleased with how I've got this sort of almost like a time tunnel effect with the pond. So there we go. What I would call extreme resin raindrop effect. Got a little bit of mica where I didn't want it, but you know, not to worry. And the gravelly sand sort of base stuff around it, you can kind of see from the back better what it looks like. Um, 
but from the front it doesn't show so terribly well but I think as an effect that is pretty awesome so there you go <laughs> another little challenge done thanks ever so much to loose screws for the idea and I thank you very much to all the subscribers and to all the people who've been commenting on my little fish. Uh, I, I need to make a load of fish. They're selling out fast on my eBay shop. Um, so if you do order any, please bear with me. I need to have a really big fit of making fish, uh, it seems, because uh, I can't make them quick enough to sell at the moment. So, uh, yeah, bear with me a little bit on that. Thank you all to my sub subscribers, as always. Anybody who'd like to subscribe, you know where the buttons are. They're down here. If you uh, would like to also chuck any more things you'd like to see me try out into the comments or into the community tab, that'd be great because, as you see, I'll, I'll have a go at most things. But, yeah, most pleased. That is quite freaky. Possibly worth exploring a bit further at some stage, but right now I'm all out of out of raindrop um, plans because I think we might have done them to death at the moment. Um, although I might use them in this sort of context again in future. Thanks for watching then, folks. I'll love you and leave you and I'll see you for the next video. Bye.